In several of my recent videos, I've been asked, why did Gondor never help Arnor earlier? That's a good question. Let's do a video on it. In 1975 of the Third Age, a Gondorian army under the command of Prince Aenor landed in Lindon to help the successor kingdom of Arfadine against Angmar. Unfortunately, the fleet had arrived too late. The previous winter, Arfadine had been overrun, and Fornost was now in the hands of the Witch King. Angmar was later defeated, but Arnor was no more. Given how handily Gondor defeated Angmar, it raises the question, why didn't they help earlier? Angmar could have been crushed centuries ago, and Arnor could have survived. The simplest answer, the two kingdoms lost contact with each other. After the death of Isildur, the two kingdoms officially separated and followed different lineages. Arnor that of Isildur, and Gondor that of Anarion. At some point, probably early in the Third Age, communication between the two kingdoms pretty much ceases to exist, and although they are nominal allies, it's never actually put to practice until the aforementioned fall of Arnor. During this long period of silence, the existence of either kingdom meant little to the other. Why exactly they lost contact is a bit of a mystery, but we can make a few educated guesses. The most obvious factor would be distance. Although Arnor and Gondor technically bordered each other at Farbad for most of their combined history, the distance between their capitals and main population centres was over a thousand miles. Of course, the kings of their respective kingdoms could communicate through the Palantiri, but the other factor, there was little reason to. On top of the great distance, both kingdoms had entirely different spheres of influences and completely different enemies, although, as they later learned, the same principal enemy was behind all efforts to destroy them. But assuming they kept in contact, and every few years the King of Arnor and the King of Gondor would have a little conference meeting through the Palantiri, could Gondor have actually helped Arnor at any stage? Were there actually decent opportunities? And if so, what would have been the best time? To answer this question, we need to look at a timeline of the Third Age, because that's what will help us come to a conclusion. For the first 800 years of the Third Age, Arnor and Gondor were largely at peace, and it's really the only part of the Third Age where both kingdoms experienced extensive overlapping periods of peace. But because they were both at peace, there was no reason for Gondor to send any help to Arnor, as far as we know, Arnor wasn't dealing with any existential threats at this point. Arnor's first major issue comes in 861, where the kingdom divides into the successor kingdoms of Arfadine, Cardolan, and Rudaur. These three successor states then spend the next few centuries warring on and off, mostly over the Tower of Amonsul and the surrounding lands. Unfortunately, we don't receive any information on how Gondor reacted to this split. We don't know if they recognised Arfadine as the legitimate successor, we don't know if they took a neutral stance. We do know that Gondor maintained a joint garrison at Farbad, which would have been under the control of Cardolan at this point, so at the very least, they weren't hostile towards each other. When the division of Arnor occurs, Gondor is under the leadership of Taranon Falastur, the first ship king, who was busy expanding Gondor's borders westwards and southwards. However, Gondor doesn't appear to have any immediate threats at this point, so they could have sent an army north to help Arfadine reclaim all of Arnor, but it would be reasonable to assume that this would be an unpopular move. Firstly, you'd be getting involved in a distant civil war with no gain for yourself, and secondly, you'd be warring against fellow Dúnedain. It's not surprising that Gondor would take a hands-off approach and let their weakening northern brethren sort it out amongst themselves. In the year 1300, Angmar first arises in the north. It's been over 400 years since Arnor split, and the three successor kingdoms have been busy weakening themselves over their petty squabbles. Meanwhile, Gondor is under the leadership of Romandigil II, and is closer to the end of its golden age rather than the beginning. Romandigil II is a brilliant leader, and has looked beyond Gondor's borders in the past, so if Arnor had asked at this point, it's very possible that Gondor would have answered. But there is one thing to consider here. We know what Angmar is, but at the time, the kings of Arfadine did not. To them, it was probably little more than a cobbled together upstart realm in a harsh land that would not survive the passage of time. Open war only began in 1356. King Argaleb I of Arfadine was killed in battle with Brudauer and Angmar, but Arfadine and Cardolan were able to hold the line of the Weather Hills. 
Although the conflict had escalated, the situation clearly wasn't desperate enough in Arfidine and Cardellan to consider requesting aid from Gondor. If they had requested aid, I'm sure it would have been given. This changes in 1409. A huge army from Angmar crosses into Cardellan, which is devastated. Amon Sul is surrounded and destroyed, King Arvalek I is killed, and Arfidine only manages to hold out thanks to the timely arrival of the elves from Lindon. But Angmar doesn't escape unscathed either. Elrond gathers forces from Lindon, Rivendell, and Lothlorien and attacks Angmar, which survives, although greatly weakened. The north is in ruins, and the board has largely been reset. It seems like a perfect time for Gondor to show up and finish Angmar off, but there's two more things to consider. In 1409, we're in the back half of the reign of King Valakar of Gondor, and in the final years of his reign, parts of his realm were already in open rebellion. This was due to the lineage of his son Eldakar, who was of half Northman stock, and this would soon lead to the Kinstrife civil war that would tear Gondor asunder. So even if Arfadine requested help at this time, there is no guarantee Valakar would give it, as he is dealing with problems at home. The second thing to consider, it's worth remembering that at this point, the men of Arnor still did not know the true nature of Angmar, that it was being ruled by one of the Nazgul, and that he could wait a long time to complete his mission. The men of Arnor might have been lulled into a false sense of security, believing that the elves had been thorough enough, and that Angmar was surely finished. And if it did rise again, Arnor could recover to counter it. But it would soon become apparent that Angmar was not finished, and as they recovered, Arnor continued to weaken, or at the very least, did not recover as swiftly. The main issue now is that the opportunity to request aid from Gondor had now largely passed, or at the very least, had become much more difficult. Following the kin strife, Gondor was more or less perpetually at war for the next 200 years, with both the Haradrim and the rebellious descendants of Castamir who had seized Umbar. These were powerful foes who proved capable of striking at the heart of Gondor, most notably when they raided Pelagir in 1634, killing King Menardil. The situation became even more dire in Gondor after 1636, when it was ravaged by the Great Plague. Gondor was left so weakened by this event that it was said that they would have been overrun had their enemies not also suffered from the plague. As a result, they spent the better part of 200 years recovering, time in which Arnor would certainly not receive any aid. Although Arthurdine mostly escaped the ill effects of the plague, what was left of Cardellan was wiped out. Angmar presumably avoided the plague altogether, and would continue to eclipse Arnor in the following years. When Gondor recovers, they are immediately at war once again. In 1810, King Tulumitar Umbardakil captures Umbar, destroying the remaining descendants of Castamir. For the last 40 years of his reign, Gondor presumably has peace, a period in which Arnor could have called for aid, but did not. In fact, Arnor actually temporarily defeats Angmar in 1851, but this also happens to be the same year that the Wayne Rider Wars begin, a conflict that would last over a hundred years and almost bring Gondor to its knees. It's during the Wayne Rider Wars, in the year 1940, when Arnor and Gondor rekindle their alliance finally realising that there is a concerted effort to destroy both kingdoms. The Wayne Riders are amassing and calling in reinforcements for a third assault upon Gondor, and in the north, Angmar has restarted its attacks, which Arnor is finding increasingly difficult to hold off. When Gondor defeats the Wayne Riders in 1944, although not without the loss of King Onderher and his heirs, Arvidui, the heir to Arnor, attempts to claim both thrones. He is unsuccessful, and the victorious general Aeonil is crowned King Aeonil II of Gondor. Aeonil does not hold Arvadui any ill will, and promises that he will send help when he feels secure. The rest is well known history. Less than 30 years later, in autumn 1973, messages come to Gondor stating that Angmar is amassing for one final assault. Gondor sends an army north with all haste, but it's too late, as in that winter, Angmar overruns the remnants of Arnor, captures Fornost, and Arvidui perishes in Forakel. Gondor manages to defeat Angmar, but for the rest of the Third Age, the northern kingdom of Arnor would not rise again. So as we can see, there was no overly large window during the Third Age where Gondor, at least from their perspective, would have been able to help Arnor. They would not have wished to get involved with Arnor's civil war, and by the time Angmar arose and started attacking Arnor, Gondor's Golden Age was at an end. 
and they were dealing with their own problems at home. Although there were brief periods where Gondor might have been able to help, these windows closed quickly due to the lack of communication between both kingdoms. And that lack of communication was ultimately what doomed Arnor, because in the end, Gondor did end up wiping the floor with Angmar, and that was when they sent a mere portion of their entire army. If the kingdoms had stayed in contact, and if both parties were aware of the true scale of each other's powers, as well as that of their enemies, then Gondor might have been able to send an expeditionary force at some point, perhaps before the Great Plague, and that might have been enough to deal with Angmar once and for all. The fate of Arnor can teach many lessons, but in the context of this video, I think the greatest lesson is that of unity. Arnor and Gondor drifted apart when they didn't need to, and when they finally reconnected, it was already too late for Arnor. If history had gone differently, if the kingdoms remained close allies, they could have helped each other the moment they needed help, instead of waiting until the last possible moment. If they had helped each other, Arnor would have survived, and when Sauron returned, he would have faced some far more formidable foes. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it, or at least found it interesting. As I said at the start of the video, I've been asked this question several times, and although I've already done several videos on both Arnor and Gondor, there's always ways of reframing things, and always new things to discover. For my part, I will always try to find a way to put more videos out that are related to Arnor, as it is one of my favourite parts of Tolkien's world building. Cheers, farewell, and remember, Daddy loves you.